This brief video will look at creating discussion boards in Blackboard. First you'll need to navigate to the content area or the content folder where you'd like to link to the discussion board. As an alternative you can have a tool link on your course menu. Um, some course shells will have this by default. You just have to make sure it's visible. This white box with the uh, line through it means that it's hidden from students. And this can be changed by using the menu icon and show link. Uh, if you don't have a link to the discussion tool, you can do it within content areas. And that's what we're going to take a look at here. So the first thing we'll do to create a discussion board is hover over the tools tab and click on discussion board. So you'll have two options here. Uh, do you want to link to the discussion board, which is the page where it'll list each and every discussion forum. Forum is kind of like your prompt. Um, or do you want to link directly to a particular forum? Uh, so let's do this route uh, to start with. And so by choosing the forum, or the or what I like to think of as the prompt, you have to title it. So you could say week number one, or whatever week it is, or unit one discussion. Uh, whatever whatever fits your uh, organization. You'll use the text editor to include any instructions um, or the questions. You can also insert images, so if you want them to comment on an image, um, I'm thinking art here, or if you have a process from a different, like an infographic that demonstrates a process, you could provide it that way and then it could comment on it. Um, same as other things, uh, other items that we've looked at in Blackboard, you can use the HTML button to add embedded videos to the instructions. So you'll include everything you need, students need to know here. And I would also list um, things like how many comments they need to make on other students' posts if you are going to require that. Um, let's see. So this is for your instructions after you've given it a title. Uh, you set it to be available. You can use these dates if you want to. This is just when it opens and closes. Uh, my best advice is to uh, just leave those open and set a due date for the assignment, and that'll get. Uh, we'll see that a little bit further down. The first setting here is viewing threads and replies. By default, when a student clicks this link, they'll see the discussion forum, which uh, will show everybody's posts. If you don't want them to see what other people have written until they've made their initial post, you check the second option. This means that I can't go browse everybody's information and then put together a post. I've got to actually contribute before I can see what other people are doing. Um, the next thing down is the grade. By default, it's not graded. You have to select this option to be able to grade the discussions. If you don't set it from the beginning and try to change it later, you're, uh, it's, Blackboard's not going to backtrack and look for those old posts. It's only going to go from the moment you set that going forward. So from the beginning, I always try to set my, uh, the, my discussions to graded. Even if it's not actually going to be graded, you can set it to zero points or uh, give it the number of points that are possible. The next thing down says show participants and needs grading status every post. Um, what this this is how you kind of govern how many posts they have to uh, provide before it shows up for you to grade. So if I want them to make an initial post and comment on two of their peers, I'm going to set this to three. That means they have to make those three posts before it will show up for me to grade. So if they only post their initial post, it's not going to show up because it's incomplete. If they post their initial post and only comment on one of their classmates' work, it's still not going to show up for me to grade because they've not completed the requirements for the assignment. Um, if you're not going to require them to comment on other students' work, you can leave it at one. Um, that means once they c contribute, it'll show up for you to grade. As always, please use a due date. This shows up in multiple places for students and it helps them uh, kind of keep up with these kinds of things. If you have a rubric or want to create one for your discussions, you can do that here. Um, this last section is how you really kind of um, choose what students can and can't do. If you want to allow them to attach files, uh, you can enable or disable that here. This is great if you want them to do peer reviews. You could create a peer review discussion and um, assign partners and you could say, so I could say, Drew, you're working with um, David. Um, 
Drew, you'll need to go to the discussion board, create a post, attach your rough draft. David, you'll do the same, and then um, you'll read each other's drafts and then comment on each other's posts with the, your feedback and recommendations. Or if you're using track changes, they can reattach a file back to their partner. Uh, if you want students to be allowed to quote from another person, uh, you can. That's kind of like a specific comment on what somebody else has posted. Um, if you check force moderation of posts, that, that's going to require you to review them before they show up for other students to read. Um, let's see. And when we click submit, uh, we'll just go back to standard view. Sorry about that. So let's click submit. So that creates the actual discussion forum or prompt for us. So the next thing it's going to ask us is what do we want to put in the content area? Do we want a link to the forum, that, that week one uh, discussion, or do we want to go to the page of all of the discussion uh, prompts? Personally, I like to send them to week one, um, so it defaults to that, or you can change to the discussion board page. And so we've created the discussion. Now what we're doing is creating the link to the discussion board um, within that content area. So it, it pulls the title by default. Um, if you've got those instructions, you can repaste them here. Um, that way it shows up in the content area and on the discussion. Uh, we want the link to be available and we can enable tracking, which shows us how many times Drew clicked on that link to go look at the discussion board. Um, finally, we'll click submit. And this places uh, the link to the discussion in that content area. So if we'd included instructions, they'd show here. And when I click this link, it takes me to the discussion. Um, nobody's posted, obviously. I would click Create Thread, and that's where I'll see my instructions, and I'll be able to type my responses or attach my files.